I'm Scott Al Miller. It's the 31st of August, 2022, and welcome to my show of daily life in Leon, Nicaragua. I'm here at the Iglesia La Borio, where I used to shoot a lot of episodes. I actually haven't been over in a while using this location, and it's beautiful, so it's a perfect time for it. It's about four o'clock in the afternoon, and I think a storm is rolling in. We just lost power, and uh, I heard that it's a lot of storming back in Managua, so it may be rolling out this way, but everything is out right at the moment. A lot of times we get it by neighborhood, and right now, everything in the city all the way down to the beach is out. So we may be out for a little while. It's been about 10 minutes now, so I decided it was a good time to come out and get some videos done since other things will have to wait. I was sick yesterday. Today I am fine. No problems at all. I did go to bed quite uh, reasonably last night and slept a long time. Uh, clearly I was short a lot of sleep because I did nap yesterday afternoon, which did not catch me up on a full night's sleep, but after napping and then sleeping a lot tonight, I feel just fine today and did a bit of walking around the neighborhood as well. So good day for all of that, but really nothing to report. Uh, we uh, just um, home all day. Uh, the kids are very excited about all the fake meat products that Dominica has made uh, <clears throat> yesterday because they have missed that a lot. Uh, so they're eating um, tofurkey and uh, her own tofurkey and uh, fake bologna and hot dogs and all those kinds of things. We actually had hot dogs for dinner tonight. So that was really cool. Um, they're excited about that and we pretty much just chilled. Liesl and I finished watching um, Arrested Development. I believe that was tonight. It may have been last night. Definitely finished that. Uh, she is sad that that is done. We did play uh, Sky. So it's an online video game that they like to play. I can't figure out the game. Like it is boring, boring, boring. And I, I, it's hard for me to play any length of time without falling asleep. Uh, so that one is tough. But it, it's like a really beautiful game. It's got great graphics and stuff, but there's like no gameplay and I can't figure out what's going on. And pretty much you just like hold a character's hand, they fly you around, you fall asleep uh, in real life. So I don't know. It's a great way to put yourself to sleep. Um, all right, that is, that is my day. Tomorrow will be a little bit more interesting. And this weekend I'm looking forward to, hopefully everything's still moving forward that we're heading up to Madagalpa this weekend, which I think will be great because I really want to get that. Some filming up there for you guys. I have not gone to other cities. I haven't done a new city in a long time time that will be really cool but today i want to talk about uh investing specifically in hospitality for expats for expats or, or immigrants who are moving into nicaragua a lot of you are interested in businesses for really logical reasons primarily because you are potentially offered a residency through that investment and tourism which includes hospitality is one of the primary allowed paths for that and it is an area that often makes sense for investors uh, who are expats to, to look at for a lot of reasons, right? There's a lot of logical reasons why all of you and myself included are gravitating towards hospitality. Now for me, I worked in restaurants starting when I was 16. My family started evaluating buying our own restaurant when I was 13. We did not, but we seriously looked at it. Um, and uh, uh, I ran hotels starting at about 19. Um, and so I managed many hotels in chains in across a couple different chains uh, and i uh, worked in a lot of restaurants including as crew chief and manager over a number of years so i have a lot of experience in hospitality uh, plus i worked in like medical um, food service and stuff like that like nursing homes kind of things uh, and then dominica um, has experience uh, working in hotels as well also managed hotels she did boutique hotels i did chain hotels she did both and uh, so that's we have a bunch of background to that and it's something we've always wanted to do and so coming to Nicaragua, we're leveraging kind of a couple different dreams together. That's kind of what led us to that. Plus we kind of just fell into it. For a lot of people, I think um, they're looking at doing their very first forays into hospitality when they come to Nicaragua. And one of the reasons for that is because it is quite accessible. Um, another is that as an expat, you tend to interface with a new country, whatever new country it is, through its hospitality and travel industries. And so just like with anything, right? If you spend a lot of time needing help in school, you're gonna to gravitate towards wanting to be a teacher. If you um, tend to break your bones a lot because you played a lot of sports in high school, you're gonna to gravitate towards being a doctor. If things like that, right? Things that you're exposed to because you've interacted with them more than average is gonna make you gravitate towards that career or investment path naturally. That's a normal thing. So expats always have a really strong gravitation 
gravitation towards hospitality because as expats, they tend to be more aware of restaurants and hotels and tours and those kinds of things in any country that they're heading to compared to normal. So that's completely logical. It is also that expats have a certain value to the hospitality industry that other people do not. Let's just say you're an expat from Germany, you've moved to Nicaragua, you have the potential to have access to people in the German market, the ability to make websites and advertise and, and work in German, things that the local population are gonna struggle to do and the thing that most expats are gonna struggle to do. So you have a leg up in that very specific area in hospitality. If you're gonna work in manufacturing, having that same ex uh, value may not exist. Right, so, so to leverage some of your expattiness uh, when coming to a new country, often hospitality is a place that uniquely allows you to do so. Uh, for those of us who speak English only, it's only so much because there's so many of us that it's not really a unique thing, but it's still, we offer something that the locals do not in many cases. For me, as an English-speaking American, my ability to tell other Americans about my businesses and so forth is better than most Nicaraguans have simply because they don't know how to reach them, they don't know where to post, they don't know the language necessarily, there's a lot of barriers for them, not, not insurmountable barriers, but there's more barriers that for me are very convenient to simply move past. I know exactly how an American would stumble on uh, the information about my properties. So I do have an advantage, and so all those things make hospitality a very attractive thing. Plus, when you're often expatting, you're also combining that with some amount of retirement, um, and so that makes a, when we retire, we tend to like uh, things like pensiones. They're called that for a reason in Europe. That is a type of hotel that is associated with the ownership of someone who has retired. The entire category uh, come, has its name pulled from the name of retirees. So it's universally recognized. People, when you're looking towards retirement, you want to sit on a beach and relax. And often that type of investment is also tied with relaxation. Um, it's not an expectation that you're going to make a lot of money doing it. And the problem is when you're an expat, you're often looking at investing and looking at making money as well. And that combination can be difficult because you're up against people who are also doing it simply for retirement, just to keep themselves busy, just to classify for residency, and they may be doing so without making a profit. And it is really difficult to compete with people who don't need to make a profit in any business area. Always be aware of that. So all of that is just a background as to why I think you're probably considering it already. And now that we have that background, Let's start talking about, is it something you really want to do? All right, so in Nicaragua, the first thing you need to understand is that hospitality is not the biggest industry here. This is not a tourism country. I know that as expats, we tend to view it as such, but in general, it is not. It is the least touristed country in the region. It is coming back a little bit. There was a time period when the country was investing really heavily in tourism and tourism infrastructure and marketing around 2015, 16, 17, and into 18. And at that point, it was really up and coming. There was a huge boom in the industry, uh, and a lot of people remember that. But in the long run, from the 90s, the early 2000s, most of the 2010s, and the last several years, tourism is a backwater industry in Nicaragua. It is not a focus of the government. It is not a focus of the population. It is not a focus of the economy. And so it's important to keep in mind that that is the case. The number of tourists coming in from the outside is very low. The number of tourists moving around inside the country, while much bigger than it used to be, is still not what you would expect in a Guatemala or a Mexico or the United States. So just some context there that you may, in depending on how you have viewed Nicaragua over the years, you may see it as much more touristy than it actually is today. And it may be much more touristy in the future, but you need to be aware that that is not where they are today and is not where they are headed uh, in any serious way. The country has changed and their investments in their internal infrastructure um, and internet and those things have made them focused on different types of economies than they have in the past. So tourism may not be a giant focus like it was again. That lesson may have been learned. That said, the investment in the Pacific Coast Highway, we believe, is moving forward, and hopefully there's going to be some boom from that, but that could be a long way away, and it may be a pipe dream. I've not seen it from any official source, so I don't want to I don't want to quote that in any big way. Also, we've heard the news. I'm going to do a short on this at some point, probably before this goes live, but who knows. We've heard rumors rumors, but they're stronger than the rumors we've heard previously, that the first of the U.S. airlines, specifically American and Spirit, are returning to Managua in November. If that happens, there's going to be a boom in traffic, a real boom in foreign visitors into Nicaragua. That will be big. Um, it'll be great. 
it'll give us a chance to be able to go home and see family again without it being a huge, unbelievable hassle. We're really hopeful that that really does happen. That is going to change the fortunes of the country significantly. It is still not going to change the things I said. It is simply going to improve a rough situation for getting in and out of the country currently. Okay, so overall, and this is really important, as a business idea, because everybody is interested in this, right? Everybody thinks this is the most fun thing, and it might be. As a business, the hospitality industry in Nicaragua is saturated. It is not just saturated, it is oversaturated. For the last three years, four years, there has been a nearly continuous shutdown or collapse of existing hospitality industry. So restaurants have gone out of business, hotels have gone out of business, tours have, have shut down, tour operators have gone looked for other careers. Those things have broadly gone away. Not because people aren't interested, because the economy is not supporting them and they have failed. What you have then is a very large number of people who have existing businesses that have already made their investments, those businesses are already here, and they are losing money or struggling badly. There are some people making money, there are not very many, and the ones who are making money are typically Nicaraguans, not expats because they have lower overhead, right? Oh, it's an old family property. There is family working at it. We don't have to pay overhead because it's just family volunteering or, you know, working for free. We pay them under the table, whatever. Whereas expats are going to have all that scrutiny. They have to have the incorporation. They have to deal with all the foreign transfers and all those things. And they're not allowed to work it themselves per se. It gets complex. Bottom line, the cost is different and the locals can operate more efficiently than the foreigners can. This is true anywhere. Not, not, it's, this is not a you know, specific problem. You just need to be aware. This is what you're up against. There's established businesses. The ones that are still here are the ones that have held out. All the ones that were really on the verge, they're gone. They were wiped away years ago. People bailed on it because they knew the money wasn't going to be coming back anytime soon. The people who are still here are either doing it out of labor of love or they believe they have a economic situation that is going to allow them to pull through. That makes for a really tough situation to get into as a new investor in the space because you're not coming into a space where there is a gap that you might fill. You are coming in to compete directly against established working businesses that are barely able to hang on when they have the entirety of the market. Any market that you go into, whether you're adding a hotel, an Airbnb, a new restaurant, whatever, you are trying to eke out a, a little piece of an already very small pie where there may not be enough to go around. So unless you're planning on putting someone else out of business who is already barely making it, there's not much opportunity to actually make money in the foreseeable future. That doesn't mean that won't change. We expect that to change, but that is a long way away. We're talking many years, not many months, right? So. Of all the things you could invest in, this is one of those with the longest amount of time before you'd be looking at a potential return because you need to do so much investment with the understanding that everybody is losing right now. Everybody. So that's that's really important to understand. It's not like, well, there's this one market, you know, in Granada and they have too many hotels and people aren't making money. No, no, no. This is everywhere, right? Yes, the San Juan del Sur's, the Granadas, they're in the worst shape because they had the highest dependency on, on um, tourism and the highest saturation and the biggest investment. And then they had the biggest drop, right? Places like Chinandega are like, eh, it's not a big deal. We had a couple hotels. Now we have a little bit less hotel, fewer hotels. Um, we had a few restaurants. Now we have fewer restaurants. But in general, they had very little tourism. So the drop in tourism barely impacted them. Yes, but it's still impacted. Everywhere has lost tourists. Just some places have lost a lot and some places have lost a little. So, and you notice that when you go to Chinandega, it feels like barely nothing's happened. You go to San Juan del Sur and it feels like a bomb has gone off, right? It is a, the differences are, are really significant. Um, it, so wherever you're looking, and the problem is the more you look, the more likely you are to look at the worst possible spots, right? If you were to come in and just throw a dart at Nicaragua, yeah, you'd probably hit an area, first of all, that's just trees, but you would end up in a spot that may not have a hotel, and yeah, it would be a struggle, but it'd be really cheap to get in, and you'd have very little competition. Maybe you could kind of make it work. But if you start doing research and you start saying, what are the big cities? What are the places that people want to go to? What have people heard of? You're going to start looking at the Granadas, the Leones, the, the San Juan del Sur's, and when you do that, we're going to start walking because the, the church is blasting us out, as always. Um, 
when you start re researching those places, you're going to be automatically pushed through the nature of what people have heard of to the same places that everyone else has invested in. And that's, yes, it's true, that is where the tourists go, but it's also the markets that are so dramatically oversaturated. So when you're looking at those places and you say, well, look, there's a bunch of Airbnbs, I could have an Airbnb there too. Of course, yes, that makes total sense, except all, almost all those Airbnbs are already empty. They're losing money. If you join that pool, you don't add more tourists to it. You only diminish the amount each of you get. So whatever they're losing, you'll be losing that too, but they'll be losing it with an earlier investment that's probably already partially paid for, and they have an established clientele and they have an established review system and you don't have those things. So you're going to be on the back foot making less in most cases than the people who are already there who are already losing. So those situations are very, very tough. You don't want to go into a place that's already saturated both because it's terrible for you and because it's terrible for the people who've been here trying to hold on all this time and are barely doing so. So you don't want to screw them over either. Not that it, it business is business, but putting, putting hardworking people out of business just because you're willing to lose money to hurt them is not a good method for running a business in the future because people will do the same to you uh, as time goes on. And so that's not something that you, you really want to participate in if you can help it. So that's, that's kind of the, the market is tough. Are there opportunities? Of course there are. Are there places where a restaurant that is different and provides something that other people does not have uh, could be beneficial? Of course. Are there people looking to go out to eat? Are there, th you know, is there growth? Yes. But it is a very, very difficult market, extremely, extremely hard, and everybody is already doing it. So, and people have asked me, well, what if I do this and they, and they try to come up with something different and what if I do it in a really remote, hey, it's a great idea. You could easily, or, or with relative ease, find a place where there is no real competition. You could find a small village with no restaurant. You could find an open bit of highway. You could find a place that has no Airbnb. That's actually quite easy to find. Big gaps. Even Matagalpa, a major city, we were looking, there's no Airbnb uh, that we would want to use anywhere in the middle of the city. Uh, yeah, way out in the country, yes, but in the city, no, which we're going up for a festival. We want to be right downtown and we had nothing that we can use. Buenas tardes. Uh, and so that was, there's a gap, right? But can you make money at it? Presumably no, because if you could, there are so many people who have homes already in Madagalpa that would put them on Airbnb if there was money to be made. Trust me, they know about Airbnb. They know how many tourists are coming through. They've talked to the hotels. They know how not busy they are. Um, and so you're, you're up against a market where people know that not to do the things you're potentially looking at doing. You're not gonna invent the wheel by saying, I'm gonna put an Airbnb in the middle of nowhere. Trust me, the people in the middle of nowhere have thought of it. They already own the homes. These are the cutest little dogs. We're gonna, look at these little dogs. They're so little. They're so cute. Um, <laughs> Uh, they've thought of those things, right? They've already said, the existing house that we have, we're not gonna bother putting in an Airbnb, there's no money to be made. Um, and, and they're doing it at much, much lower overhead. So that is, in general, um, unless you have something really special, um, unless you have a real passion for, for doing um, hospitality, my, my gut says it is something you want to avoid. It is a very volatile market, even in the United States, where the, the hospitality market is relatively easy compared to most countries, where incorporation is low cost, the barrier to entry is low, and um, th there's a lot of internal travel all the time. It is an extremely competitive, very difficult business, and can, at times, make good money. In Nicaragua, you're looking at an almost guaranteed loss, and if you were to be successful, the amount of money that you could make is so low that there's a very real possibility you will never be able to live on it. Hola! Uh, and that makes it really, really tough that your, your d definition of success has to be one of, well, we didn't lose too much money. Um, and, and if your goal is purely uh, residency through investment, he thinks I, didn't, I don't see him back there, but I definitely see him. <laughs> uh, residency through investment, and you're completely fine with simply losing the money or attempting to hold on to the money but not make money, 
then that is absolutely an acceptable thing and you simply need to understand that risk and if you accept that risk then great great that that could be a perfect thing uh, for you and it's good for the country because you could be creating jobs um, do consider looking for a place where you're not competing with existing businesses because you could put real people out of business um, people who've been here and put their lives into something um, and and cause families to starve so be very careful with creating any new business that competes with an existing one uh, for sure. But, but if that's something you want to do and you're okay with it, then absolutely, right? Go find that unique place. Go find that place that is failing and rescue them. Awesome, right? Do that stuff, employ some people. But if you're looking for a form of income, you're looking for an actual investment that's going to make you money, then I think you're going to find that hospitality in Nicaragua is going to be um, very, very difficult. And, and certainly you're going to need the same kinds of investment that you would need in the United States. If you wanted to invest in the United States and be able to live off of your investment without having to work that investment yourself, without having to be the hotel manager or be the chef or whatever, you are looking at investments of half a million to a million dollars to have any hope of having the residuals from your business be enough for you to live on. Of course, in Nicaragua, the amount you need to live on is a, is a bit lower, but the the ratio is going to be the same. If in the United States you needed sixty thousand dollars a year to live on, and in Nicaragua you're okay living on say twelve thousand a year or eighteen thousand dollars a year, which certainly you could, then you're going to have to adjust those numbers accordingly. If that was a half million dollar investment in the United States, yes, you could do it with a quarter million dollar investment here in Nicaragua when the economy returns. But until then, you're gonna to have to probably make it five or 10 years with no income to get to that point where it's gonna happen. So be aware that there could be this huge amount of time and you will probably not just not make money during that time, you will probably have to fund the business for all that time. And if you ever lose heart, if you ever get to a point where you can't continue to put money into it, there is a very high likelihood that whatever investment you have made will be lost. And that's just part of the risk. Businesses are risky in general. Businesses in small economies are more risky and hospitality is high risk in any industry, in any economy, in any market. So you put those things together, you have to accept this is a, an extreme high risk scenario and you need to know exactly what you're doing. I would not do it casually um, within reason. Now, if you're doing all of your, your homework, right? Oh, well, I wanna do an Airbnb and I'm okay losing the money. It's not like your property is gonna evaporate, right? I bought a house, I set it up for an Airbnb. Okay, at some point, someday, you can probably sell that house. Um, you may be very difficult to sell for a very long time, but that's okay. Uh, if you're okay with holding out on that, you may not permanently lose that money. It may just be tied up for a long time. That's fine. There are things you can do that are going to be less cost intensive, price intensive, whatever, um, and, and you can balance your risk as is appropriate for you. Everyone has their own risk scenarios that make sense for them, but all business is about risk, right? Business is making money based off the risk and the effort that you put in. So uh, an Airbnb could be a low risk. A hotel is often a very high risk because essentially you have to stay open and manned 24 seven or you are not a functional hotel and you will simply bleed money. If you close, you will bleed like crazy. And if you stay open, you'll bleed like crazy unless you have people in it. So hotels uh, tend to be extremely high risk. Restaurants are similar. You have to have a chef, you have to have a waiter. If you don't, you have no business to try to stay open with, right? This is a really cool house, by the way, on this, like I. I don't know why I don't know it on the street. I don't normally walk this slowly down the street. Uh, so that's, I hope that gives you a picture, right? Uh, in general, it really comes down to, if, if your goal in life is to own a restaurant or to own a hotel in Nicaragua, and that's going to make you happy, the ownership, the getting to, to show off your hotel, have family come visit you in your hotel, go around shaking hands as guests come to the hotel. Absolutely, it could be a low cost and it could qualify for your residency investment, um, way to get something you enjoy. And that's fantastic. But if your goal is that this is a way to turn a relatively small amount of uh, American retirement capital into a big investment that's gonna make you lots of money, it's probably a pipe dream. There's no get rich quick schemes even in America, let alone in places with smaller economies. There's just nowhere for that money to come from. Uh, so keep that picture. It's, it's not magic. 
but it can be fun. And many of you will point to, I am a hospitality investor here in the country, and that to some degree may be why a lot of people watching this channel are like, well, he's doing it, that makes sense. Maybe I should do it too. Um, but remember, this is something that I've done for many years in the United States. I have a lot of experience in it. I have, and this is really important, right? I have existing American businesses. And those things fund me. I do not live off of anything in Nicaragua. I have no intention of ever living off of anything in Nicaragua. My personal goals here are to never drain the economy. I do not want to make my personal money from the Nicaraguan economy. All of my investments in Nicaragua, now this is a personal thing, right? But all of my investments here are investments in. So it's money coming from the outside. I am putting it into the local economy because I am trying to make a difference. That mentality changes a lot of things. I don't have to make any money here. I'm already paid. I have money to make investments. I am simply investing. I can hold out for a really long time because I have more investment dollars continuing to come from the outside. Prefer not to have to keep putting money in, but I can if I have to. Um, and when I'm looking at businesses here, this is my home. This is already my home. I am planning on being here for a very, very long time. The fact that I could invest today and wait 10 years to make money doesn't bother me at all. That is perfectly fine. I do want to have my residency investment, so that is a positive for me, but I have other ways I could do that as well. There's lots of options. but. For me, the, the value of I've always wanted to own restaurants, I've always wanted to own hotels, those are things I'm willing to buy uh, in the same way that you might buy a new TV, right? So, oh, I want to have this because the hotel is part of my entertainment. I love owning it. Yes, that is, that is fun um, in general, not always, but it can be fun. Um, and so the, it, is, it is entertainment. I, I want restaurants and bars because I like to go to them. And I like having access to food that I wouldn't have access to otherwise. All those things. But I am consistently, across the board, losing money. Not insane amounts, but I am not making money on my investments. I don't intend to make money on my investments. I will try my best to make money on my investments. But if I do, I will not be going out shopping with it. I will simply be creating more jobs using that money and trying to grow internal businesses. I don't have any plans to pull from it. Though those factors change things quite a lot. This is a really cute cat. We're gonna come say hi. Look at this cat. Oh, no, he got scared. I was gonna say hi to the cat. And uh, so, so you have to look, when you're looking at me and say, well, he seems to be being successful to some degree. Right, he's happy with his stuff, he's been there for a while, he keeps expanding, yes, all of that is true. I am expanding by continuing to put in money from the outside. It is basically me buying toys for myself. I am carefully trying to not put myself in a, in a dangerous position where everything could evaporate and, and be gone and have huge losses, but I am in a position where I am regularly putting money in to keep things afloat because we are trying to keep people from losing their jobs. We went in, we bought businesses that were failed or about to fail, right? These are not things that you can just do a slightly better job and suddenly make money. It's not that we can invest and magically by investing, they're going to be profitable. That's not at all the situation. We went in knowing very well that people with many, many years of running businesses successfully, of running these kinds of businesses successfully, of owning other businesses like these, were unable to make money and these were going to fail. And we bought them because we wanted the location. We bought them because maybe we want to use it as a house. We bought it because we want to save people's jobs. All of those things, that's the context. And so if you're going in with that same context, then hospitality may be something that works very well for you. But I have a feeling from talking to a lot of people, I don't think very many people are coming in with that mentality and nothing wrong with that, right? People are coming in with the mentality though of how am I going to pay my bills once I get there? I need a stable income, kind of like a retirement. They're basically looking in many cases for something akin to a pension, meaning a set monthly income that comes from their investments. And so if you're gonna come in with a half million dollars and put that into hospitality here, the thought is, well, that will then pay me. You know, I have this saved up money. It's going to give me a certain amount of money every month, and I'll be able to live forever in Nicaragua on that money. And that could work out if the numbers are big enough. But I think you would find that the average person coming in with a half million dollars for real, an actual half million dollars pumped into 
hospitality businesses here, the chances that you'd be able to pay your bills based off of that is very low for now. In 10 years, if you invested that money today and kept investing to keep the doors open for 10 years, I think very high likelihood you would have a good return on your investment someday. But you may have to wait a really long time. If you are over the age of 50, it may be waiting so long that you can't take those risks that it may just be ridiculous, right? So you have to gauge those things. It's hard. It's hard to say, look, look what I'm doing. It's not a good idea. Um, but I have to say that we have to say that to ourselves all the time, right? This is something that loses us money. Everything we do loses us money, but we do it because we love it here and we are not just investing in the in financial terms but we're investing in the country that we love we're investing in making life better here by creating jobs giving opportunities filling in gaps that are missing or were going to occur because a business failed and keeping them from failing so that is that is our position as to why we're in hospitality here if my goal was to make money if i wanted to be a mogul right hospitality in nicaragua at this time absolutely not the thing to do that is not a good way to make money here. We're gonna talk about how to make money as an expat tomorrow, and uh, you may not like the answer, but I think it's something that people need to hear. Thanks for joining me, like and subscribe, ask your questions, get down below. You can buy me a coffee for all this advice, because you know, I need coffee, and uh, I will see all of you tomorrow.